Think about organizing your basement. Your basement is kind of like that catch-all space in your house. It's that place where you put those things you only maybe use once or twice a year, or if you get something new, you'll throw it into the basement and say, eh, I'll get to it later. And then all of a sudden, your basement kind of just fills up with junk and clutter and when you actually need something down there that's important, it's pretty much impossible to find. Well, maybe that works for the hoarders out there, but for me, it ain't happening. <laughs> Think about your photography files in the exact same way. You've already gone through all the trouble to go out and make all these beautiful photos, but what good are they if you don't have a method in place to organize your photos in a way that actually makes sense? Guys, file management and file organization is super, super important. And it's something that can seem a little bit scary or a little bit daunting when you're starting out within photography. But I'm here to tell you that it's actually not so bad. So today I wanted to take you through a step-by-step -step guide on how I organize my photography files. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop into the computer right here and show you a little demo of how this works from start to finish. Starting with ingesting your files right off your camera after a shoot, all the way through to the final step of permanently storing your images. Then we'll come back together at the end for a few key takeaways, all right? Let's jump into it. Okay, so I've just got back from a shoot and the first step is to ingest your photos from the shoot into your computer. Now, the key when it comes to organizing your photography files is to come up with a consistent method of naming your files. Or in other words, a consistent file naming structure. And that doesn't just go for the individual files themselves, but also for the folders with which they live in. And when you're thinking about a file naming structure, you want it to be something that will make sense over the course of time as you add more and more shoots to your machine, to your archive. So it's up to you how exactly you want to do this based on however you shoot or what it is you're shooting. But here's how I do it. So for every ingest that I do, I make a folder on my desktop that starts with the year, month, and date. So in this case, it would be 2020, 07, 28, I'll underscore with the initials of the photographer who shot it and that's super helpful in case you have multiple shooters working on the same shoot or the same project. And then another underscore and then a brief description of the shoot that you just did. So today I shot photos of the Boston Red Sox workout so I'm going to call this Red Sox workout. And so every single shoot that I do gets ingested into my computer or into my hard drives with this exact same file naming structure. Now, within that ingest folder, I always make two separate subfolders. One will be called full, and the other is called edits. Now, the full folder is the folder that's going to house all of my original, all of my unedited, untouched raw images straight out of camera, straight out of the card from the camera. And the edit folder is going to house the final edited group of selects that I'm going to deliver to the client or upload to my archive. So again, every single shoot that I do, I make sure to have both of these two subfolders within my main ingest folder. And if you're wondering, yes, I do save my full take, everything that I've shot from every single shoot that I do. Now, this may seem like overkill, but you just never know what kind of request is going to come in or what might come up in the future. And overall, I think storage is cheap enough these days. So in my view, there's virtually no downside to saving all of your images. So that's my file naming structure, which we'll definitely revisit in just a few minutes and you'll see how important that really is and how that comes together over time. But now that I've got my ingest folder all set up and ready to go and my two subfolders ready to go, I'm going to open up another window in my finder and find the memory card with the photos that I just shot. So in this case, it would be the Nikon D5. And this houses all the raw files that I shot from today's workout out on the field. And so I'm gonna locate those files right here and as you can see, I've got all the raw files right from the camera right here. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to make two duplicate copies of my take from the shoot. So I'm gonna drag one set of the photos into the full folder, and then that same set of all the photos into the edits folder. So basically I'm dragging my full shoot into both folders, the full and the edits. And we'll let those ingest. Okay, so now that I've got all those ingested, it is time to go through and kind of edit your photos. So 
I use a program called Photo Mechanic, which is an awesome program that you can use to kind of sort through and select all your images for your final edit, and also to add metadata like your captions and your keywords. And this is pretty much the industry standard when it comes to tagging and metadata, so I'll be sure to link it below so you can check it out. So once I've got everything copied in, I'm going to pull my edits folder into Photo Mechanic right down here. And from here, I kind of like to work backwards. So even though this is my edits folder, I'm starting out by looking at my full take. So what you're seeing here is everything that I shot from the workout. So basically I'm going to go through one by one and I'm gonna hit the T button to trash each frame that I don't like. And basically I'll leave the frames alone that are good, leave the frames alone that I like or that I wanna save for my final edit. And so remember, all the while I'm not touching my full take of photos at all, my full take is still kind of existing untouched in that other full folder that we made. So I'll fast forward through this process here of the editing and how I would normally do this. Okay, so I just got through the full sequence and basically all the ones that are selected here are going straight to the trash. So these are the miscellaneous photos that I don't want that I'm not gonna use as part of my final edit or my final group of selects. So I'll drag those to the trash. And you can see I'm working with nine images here that I'm going to use as my final edit. Now, remember how we named our ingest folder with that specific file naming structure? Well, the actual files that live within these folders, so these final images right here, should also be named with the exact same file naming structure. So what I'm gonna do is select all these photos, so highlight them all and make sure they're all selected. Then I'm gonna go up to File, Rename Photos. And right here, I'm gonna use the exact same structure that I was using for my ingest folder. So year 2020, month 07, date 28, underscore initials, BW, underscore brief description of what you just shot, Red Sox workout, and then underscore, and this is just a code for the sequence. I'm gonna start my sequence at 01, and then I'll hit rename, and that will rename all of my files straight to that same exact naming structure that I used for my original ingest folder. So in other words, the name of the files mirrors the name of the folder that which they live in. And that way every layer of my filing is named in a consistent manner that doesn't change from shoot to shoot. So now we're at the point where I typically edit the photos and add captions to the photos and bring them into Photoshop to edit. So for this demo, I'm gonna go ahead and do all that, but fast forward through it so you can keep things moving. done and now I need to move it to the places it needs to go for permanent storage. So within my original ingest folder, you'll now see that I have my full take of original images still untouched right here, as well as my edits folder, which has now been narrowed down to just those best couple of images. And I've got both the raw and the JPEG in this edit folder. I'm gonna open up a new finder window, find my 2020 hard drive right here. And now you'll see why this naming structure is so important, why it comes in so handy. So if I open up 2020, you'll see this is every single thing that I've shot here in 2020. Now this is a lot of shoots, but with this naming structure, you can see everything is super easy to find since the folders fall into place, organized chronologically based on that naming structure. And if I need to go find photos within any one of these, I can go in, quickly find my edits from this workout or this shoot, and then also I can go back into my full take and find all of those untouched original raw files in case I need to find anything. So I'll go to my 2020 index and I'll just copy our ingest from today right into the 2020 folder. Now, 
as with any sort of data that you're handling on your computers or on your hard drive, it's super important to make sure you have your photos backed up to multiple different locations. So yes, I just copied my shoot from today onto my 2020 hard drive, but I also want to make a redundant location, a redundant backup in case anything were to happen to that drive, like a hard drive failure, or fire, or anything that could happen. So I've got my master Drobo hard drive here, which pretty much houses every single thing that I've ever shot. Now, here's another suggestion. It really helps to keep everything organized year by year. So what I've done is made a folder for each year and within those folders, I have all of my shoots from that year. And again, with that naming structure, I can go in, I can find any shoot that I've done super easily just based on the date alone and the brief description of what I've shot. So if I go into the 2020 file on my master Drobo hard drive, it's a mirror of everything I've shot. And again, I'll just copy that in. And now I've got it backed up to a second location, a second form of backup. Finally, and this step isn't essential, but I definitely do recommend it. I upload all of my edits or all of my selects to Photo Shelter, which is a really great cloud-based digital asset management system. So think of this as like a third layer of protection, a final layer of protection, but the beauty of this being that you can access your files anywhere that you've got an internet connection. And although this is within the Photo Shelter server, I'm basically just going to mirror the file structure that we were just talking about within our hard drive. So I've got all of my years here, and then within the years, I've got all of my shoots organized by date and a brief description of the shoot. So I can just go in and I can add today's workout, 2020-0728 Red Sox workout. I can make a gallery for that. And then I can just find my selects right here in my edits folder. Just take out the JPEGs, drag them all in. And now I've got all of those images backed up to the cloud. So now I've got them backed up on my 2020 hard drive, my master Drobo hard drive, and a digital cloud-based server in Photo Shelter. All right, guys, that's the process, super simple. Now, what are the key takeaways and the most important things to remember when it comes to filing and storing your photography? First, you wanna establish a consistent file naming structure. Come up with a consistent, easy to remember thread that you can use for both your individual photo files as well as the folders that they live in. That way, every level of data from the individual photos on a micro level all the way up to the entire folders are named in a consistent chronological fashion that'll be easy to navigate. Second, remember to keep your full take separate from your edit. Always keep your full take of what you shoot. You simply never know what kind of request is going to come up or what someone will need at any given time. These days, storage is super cheap, so you can afford to keep literally everything. Remember, your archive is an asset of yours, and don't do yourself a disservice by deleting the things you've shot. You really never know. Finally, and most importantly, make sure you've got multiple ways to access your photography files. If you have a primary hard drive you store everything on, invest in a second hard drive to duplicate all of that content and physically store it in a different location. That way you know you're protected in case something happens to your workspace or the hard drive fails. Now as an extra layer, consider investing in a cloud-based asset management system like Photo Shelter. This will allow you to access your files on the go and give you that triple layer of data protection you need. So keep it clean, keep it neat, keep it organized, and you'll be totally good to go in finding and managing your photography files no matter what. Guys, I hope you found this video helpful, but if you have any questions, any thoughts, any comments, please drop a comment down below. I'm all ears. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And listen, if your basement is a mess, now is the time to get on that. Come on, people.